game for the first time since he was traded in September of 88 for tackle Jim Lachey. However, the big question regarding Schrader this afternoon was whether or not he would start this game given the sore shoulder that had him leave last Sunday's game against the Chargers. But he came out early, worked out today, seemed to have some good zip on his passes. He told me that his shoulder feels okay and that he will go as long as possible in this game. He also told me that he definitely plans to start. He's excited to play back here at RFK Stadium, and he wants to have a lot of fun. On a more serious note, he also has to have a good performance. This is the final year of his contract, and there's speculation that he may not be back next year with the Raiders, of course, as well as his teammate running back Marcus Allen, who is a long-standing and now public feud with owner Al Davis. Their coach, Art Shell, told us last night, this team hasn't laid it on the line game after game like Raider teams used to. He's very disappointed in this club. It could be the final game for a lot of Raiders. They do also have a problem at quarterback. Well, we watched Jay Schrader warm up. His shoulders bothering him a little bit. He's going to start today, and I think he'll go as far as he can. You may well be seeing the last game, though, for some of the Raiders, like Bob Golick and Marcus Allen. And there is Big Art Shell now in his third season as coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. His two previous teams were playoff clubs. And Joe Gibbs, the man who has led the Redskins to three Super Bowl championships. Came here in 1981 as an assistant from San Diego, moved up, and now ready to kick off for the Raiders is Jager. Gets the ball, barely deep. Ryan Mitchell at the three-yard line. And Mitchell is cut down at the 18-yard line. And there the Redskins go on offense. First down and 10. Jim Lachey, one of the best tackles in pro football, back at the left tackle position. He had a knee injury much of the season. Another huge offensive line, but it hasn't protected the passer like it did last year. Injuries have been a problem. Ripping at quarterback, as Bill Parcells pointed out, his stats this year reflect the drop-off in offense by the Redskins as a team. Biner could be a 1,000-yard rusher if he has 37 yards a day for a third straight season. And off to Biner as he cuts back. The Raiders give ground grudgingly to the run. They're one of the best in the NFL against the run. In fact, great second overall. A huge defensive front. Howie Long having a terrific year. Broughton and Harrison, enormous defensive tackles. Townsend at right end. Wallace, Bell, and Moss back the line to start the game. Pro Bowl player at left corner for the Raiders. And Terry McDaniel, he may be their best player this season. Ronnie Lott having another terrific year at strong safety. The veteran, former 49er. Second down, and the Redskins need about eight. Art Monk on an end around. He breaks it. And the 13-year veteran, Art Monk, who hasn't had the ball in his hands much in recent games, gets it on an end around and hits a big one. Well, the Redskins try to knock the Raiders off balance there a little. And uh, when they run the when the Redskins run the reverse, it's usually been Art Monk over the last 10 years. And, there you see some good blocks with uh, Ray Brown leading around the corner on the uh, free safety there. Eddie Anderson, number 33, and Redskins have good field position right now about their own 36. 16-yard gain. On a quick draw up the middle, they go to Biner, a power back that Joe Gibbs told us yesterday is a coach's dream. Gives it everything he's got every day of practice, every play of every game. Super smart. You don't have to coach him. He really, in a sense, coaches himself, he said. Well, one of the things they like to do with Biner, and you see the Redskins in the no huddle right now, is they like to spread out and then run Biner inside on those draws and delays early in the game. Again, they go to Biner as on second down and four, he turns it outside and gets close to the 45-yard line. And third down now arises for Mark Rippon and the Redskins. Rippon, there's Eddie Anderson, a veteran free safety of the Raiders. Rippon comes in with 12 touchdown throws and 17 interceptions. A year ago, he finished with 28 touchdown passes and just 11 interceptions. A year ago, he was the number one passer in the National Conference. Right now, he's at the bottom of the NFC passer ratings, but has come out of late, and Gibbs had high praise for him. He said he's shown a lot of leadership. He's been under duress because of the big rush against him this year. Rippon stands in. They give him time. He swings it out. Gary Clark makes his 60th catch of the season, and it's good for a first down out to the 49-yard line. Well, in the Redskins three, three wide receiver offense today, you're going to be seeing Desmond Howard. You know, he here's Gary Clark coming across on that last reception, but 
Howard's going to be replacing Ricky Sanders, and that kind of gives the Raiders just a little bit of a problem because Howard may move to some different positions today, and they haven't seen much of him on film. Their defensive backs haven't had you know much study on him, so it's kind of a new experience for the Raiders' defense against a guy like Howard, too. He's very fast. Desmond Howard has run down close to 4-2, and again, the skins go to the power game. Aaron Wallace from an outside linebacker position makes the stop on the run, but there's another substantial gain on first down, a gain of six. Well, Redskin philosophy has always been either the short pass or the good solid off tackle, counter tray, their famous running game. But when the Redskins are second and five, this is when Joe Gibbs is at his best on his play calling because it, he really can keep you off balance in this situation. Art Monk, the lone wide receiver on second down and four. Gary Orr, the H-back shifts. And Rippin on a call rollout. Hires a strike downfield to Art Monk. So Monk, Bill, very much in the game plan early. Well, this is the thing that Joe Gibbs told us yesterday, though, that they wanted to create a balance. They felt like the, the Raiders' defensive front line was just a little too strong physically to just say, hey, we're going to come in there and we're going to run the ball down their throat. So they're going to... They're going to just try to mix both run and pass on first down, and they've done it successfully so far here in the first part of the ball game. Art Monk's caught just 11 passes in the previous seven games, and very obviously they're looking to get the ball to 81 again. A Hall of Famer to be as the handoff goes to Viner. Great offensive line blocking on first down. They rip open the Raider defensive front, and the game is inside the Los Angeles 35-yard line. Well, you see number 87 to the bottom of the screen coming across. Ron Middleton and leading Ernest Biner through. They have no man for the safety man, Eddie Anderson, 32, but he came up and missed the tackle, and, and Biner was able to get a good six on first down again. So, again, the same situation for the Redskins. Second and four, this is just what they want. Biner with five carries already. He has 20 yards. On second down and four, up the middle they go. And the game will be down close to the 30-yard line as the H-back Terry Orr gets the ball and Winston Moss takes him down. This is only the seventh regular season meeting between the Raiders and Washington in the previous six. Raiders have won four times. Of course, Bill, the Redskins remember vividly that Super Bowl 18 and the blowout loss to the Raiders at Tampa, 38-9. Well, that was, you know, one of the more one-sided Super Bowls that we've had. And you see there Terry Orr kind of limping off and... This would be a big loss for the Redskins right now because Desmond Howard, their third wide receiver, is kind of a fill-in guy now. And, you know, Orr has been kind of the guy they're going to use to set the balance today. If he's hurt, they're in trouble. On third and short, third in a yard, they go back to Ernest Viner, and on a dive play right, he takes it ahead for what appears to be yet another Redskin first down. Now they make the spot they might have to measure. Gary Austin, the referee. Joe Gibbs talking about the tremendous emotion in that game last week at Philadelphia when the Redskins almost pulled it out, only to lose 17 to 13. And as you pointed out, Bill, they were all concerned about summoning back that high emotion level. Well, and most of them said that this emotion level that they've been on was for two weeks. You know, they had that great win against Dallas here and the controversial play in the end zone and everything. And then going to Philadelphia in that game and... Uh, See, they're about two inches short of that first down there. And I think Joe Gibbs made the decision they're going to go for it. But the emotion of, of those two division games, then you go against a team that's out of your conference, and it's just a little different. You're not as familiar, and it's not as much of a blood war as those division games. Redskin fans coming alive now. They didn't view that as a friendly spot on the home field. So fourth down and less than a foot. I set. Rippin calls his own number 11, takes it ahead. He's a big quarterback at over 230 pounds, and behind his center, he powers his way straight ahead. McKenzie blowing out the linebacker. First down, Redskins. Well, this quarterback sneak was a, was a play you never had to worry about when Joe Theismann was the quarterback of the Redskins. They would never try it, but now they have a guy 6'4", 230 pounds, 
They'll run that quarterback sneak with a big quarterback. Rippin goes right back to Ernest Viner. Hounding away Ernest Viner. He came into the game with 963 yards rushing. And he's closing in on 1,000 already here in the first quarter as he's only needed 37 today to get to 1,000. Game clock down to 7.53 and running. It was interesting, Bill. You were, you've watched so many hours and hours of Redskin offensive tape. There's usually, what, two shifts and a couple of set changes? Well, it's usually two shifts and a motion, and, but they're, they're doing a little more of an up-tempo offense today, trying to give Rip, Rip a pre-snap read, and so they're a little less shift in the day. Got the tight end, Ron Middleton, down the line with a lead block. And again, they go to the run. And again, it's Ernest Biner. Play with the uh, right guard there, uh, Mark Schlereth, pulling through. And uh, you keep having these third and ones, though, and you're not going to do a whole lot of business against the Redskins. And the whole key to stopping them is the first down defense. Make it second and ten, second and nine. You have a lot better chance that way. Howie Long and work. And again, Ernest Biner, our slant right, takes it inside the 20-yard line on third down, and he appears to have a first down as the Redskins have controlled the clock since the opening kickoff. We're now winding down to six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Well, I think if you ask Joe Gibbs how he'd want to start the game or, or you ask any coach how you'd want to start any game, this game has started just about the way the Redskins uh, would like to have it, provided now they can drive it all the way in for the seven points. Uh, you know, they've had the ball, we're, we're almost into the five-minute area here, and, and the Raiders haven't had a snap on offense yet. Fifteen play drive, still alive for the Redskins. They've got 63 yards so far. This time the Raiders rise up. They're reading 21 all the way, Bill, and they knock back Ernest well, Spiner. They made their mind up. They were going to do something about that first down play, and they 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 used the defense that involved a lot more pressure. And and uh, as a result, you see it's a minus play now. And now the Redskins should be able to dictate the the the, uh, the down and distance and play the defense that they want to play. The current drive, and it's still alive. Run close to 10 minutes off the first quarter clock now. Rippin hands off another straight ahead run by Ernest Biner, and he's inside the 20. Second down carry Winston Moss, a huge outside linebacker, a former Tampa Bay Buck, made another tackle. Again, that was a straight strategy that the Redskins have always liked to use, though. Spread the defense out, make it appear they're in a passing formation, and then run the delay or the draw play to Ernest Biner and let him pick his way and hope he can crease it. Raiders did a good job. Now they have a third and 12. Rippin could hit somebody deep before long. Raiders bringing a lot of people up to try to stop this rushing onslaught of the Redskins. And here comes Rippin taking the drop. He's got people running to the end zone. Gary Clark going for the ball. Defended against by Lionel Washington. So the Redskin drive stalls and they send out one of the very best Chip Miller to try a field goal. He's having another great year, hitting 28 of 36 field goals this year, and there's nobody better long. He's hit 11 of 13 outside the 40. That's a victory of sorts, though, for the Raider defense oh, yeah. to, to, to have that ball move down the field, and, and now they're having to, to settle for the field goal. I think the Raiders feel pretty good to get over there and settle down a little and uh, see if they can do a better job on first down. Low Miller with the field goal try, and it's wide. So a most impressive opening drive with an empty ending. Redskins fail to score. Ricky back at RFK Stadium in Washington. The Redskins have owned the first quarter. An 18-play drive down the field as they mix the run in the pass. But then Low Miller was wide on a field goal try. And now Jay Schrader, who spent four years as a Redskin, back at RFK Stadium. Said last night he was wondering what the visiting locker room was like. They didn't know if he'd start until before the game because of an ailing shoulder. Running with the ball is Nick Bell, a huge back from Iowa with breakaway speed. Might be a ball on the field. Bell getting the starting call. 
He's averaging almost five yards a carry, the best per carry average of any of the Raiders. Apparently, Bill, the Raiders held onto it. Well, Nick Bell is, I think, is the biggest halfback I've ever seen. We, we were talking to the uh, Raiders PR department uh, last night, and they said that uh, when they had the weigh-in this week, Nick Bell weighed in at a smooth 258 pounds. So that's pretty good size for a tailback, 258. And he actually was a sprinter on the Iowa track team. Great ability. He was a number two pick in 91. Hasn't played that much. Once again, they go to Bell. And again, Redskins shut it down. Shane Collins, a rookie defensive end from Arizona State, makes the stop. Offensive line, Todd Pete starting at left tackle for the injured Bruce Wilkerson. Wisniewski will be going to the Pro Bowl again. Mosbar, top center. Mant Montoya, another good season at guard. And McElroy plays right tackle. Steve Smith, as good a blocker as they say there is in the league as a fullback. Brown and golf the deep speed. Ethan Horton, the tight end. They haven't gotten the ball to him much. Not as much as they'd like to. A three wide receiver set now for the Raiders on third down and two. This is Tim Brown in motion. Catch and a dive forward by Tim Brown, and he's across the 35 yard line on a third down and three. It's a first down for the Raiders. Well, the real matchup concern here for the Raiders would be in their offensive line at the left tackle spot there. Todd Pete, number 64, and uh, in this case, he'd be blocking Fred Stokes, but Todd Pete's really a guard and has played guard his whole career, and he's forced into that tackle position today. And, and I'm sure that, you know, there's not a great comfort level uh, uh, for Todd playing out there on that space. He's used to playing in the confined quarters of the guard position. We know, Bill, that the Raiders have been challenged before this game by their coach and some of their team leaders to rise up and play the spirited Raider football that's been their hallmark as they give good time now to Schrader. He lets a long ball rip. Nobody's back there but a red skin, and it's picked off. A.J. Johnson on the run with blockers in front of him. He's across the 30 and the 35 and out of bounds at the 40. A Schrader's long ball is certainly long, but very, very inaccurate. I think there was some kind of mistake on the part of the wide receiver, number 85, Sam Grady there, because Schrader looked like he expected Grady to go a different direction. Sam Grady was running a deep pattern. It looked like he might have broken the pattern off. Bill Parcells will take a look at it after we go to live action now on the first down play. Ripping, play faking and looking deep. Let's a rip to an open man, but he overshoots Art Monk at the 42-yard line of the Raiders. Here's the interception play now thrown by Schrader. Well, there's Sam Grady right here in the slot, right here. And it looks like as he breaks his penalty, it looks like he should have come back here, but he kind of gives up, not expecting the ball. And uh, he just looked like he gives up on the pattern. That's why they had the interception. Griffin throws a long ball down the sidelines. On the fly is Desmond Howard. So Griffin, who has not had a warm welcome a lot of game days here in Washington this season after being the Super Bowl MVP last January. Now three of six as you see for just 17 yards but he's starting to look at the deeper stuff Bill. Yeah and, and this is the situation though that's that's always the toughest for a quarterback. You got a third and ten. He had a third and 14 right before the field goal and, and this is when the Raiders defense and the strength of their defense which is at the quarterback position and on the defensive line with their pass rush comes to the forefront. Third and ten. Art Monk lost his footing on the natural grass turf here with RFK as he tried to cut in. Wasn't Rippin's fault, nor was it Art Monk's. Sometimes the feet don't stick and the Raiders hold on the three down and out. Well, Rippin's running a sprint out there and you see number 42 on the 50-yard line, Ronnie Lott, Monk falls down, but Lott gets his hands on the ball that would have never gotten to Monk and almost makes the interception. 
Tim Brown is back for the Raiders. Kelly Goodburn is the punter for the Redskins. His net has not been good this year. Less than 33 yards. A line drive that'll come back to Skins. Terrific play in the open field. James Jenkins, a backup tight end from Rutgers, comes down and makes the stop. So the Raiders take over the ball for a second time with the long field to go and just 142 to play in the quarter. First down and 10 after a punt by Kelly Goodburn of the Redskins. Jay Schrader at quarterback comes in hitting just 49% of his throws. 11 for touchdowns. He's had 10 interceptions. Three players have been a quarterback for the Raiders this year. Matt Murnovich was in for a while. Vince Evans has played some. He would have been the starter. Schrader's shoulder held him out of the game. But Schrader ready. To throw deep. We saw that. Put a ball 60 yards downfield. Only to have it kicked off. First down. Nick Bell. Govea. Middle linebacker comes up and makes the stop. The front seven of the Redskins. Charles Mann, his sack count down from 11 and a half a year ago at this time to four and a half this year. Shane Collins playing very well at defensive end. Wilbur Marshall's the only Redskin that'll be going to the Pro Bowl, having maybe his best year. Daryl Green, after recovering from the fractured arm, one of the best one on one coverers at right corner. A.J. Johnson, left corner, is the man who got the opening interception. There's a penalty marker down. And he lost the ball to someone not in the game. Let's see what the penalty call is now. First of the game. He was looking over towards Tim Brown. Illegal motion against Los Angeles. Bill, what about this Raider team? You know, it's the oldest team in the National Illegal Football motion. League. Number 87 was moving when a second player was moving. The penalty is declined. Declined the down. penalty. How much restructuring needs to be done to get them back as a contender? I think there's uh, there's quite a bit of work to be done with the with the Raiders uh, team. I think the defensive line is is very strong. Uh, I think that the cornerback position is strong, but every other spot you know could use a little help. And the primary one, of course, that they've got to settle on is the quarterback position. Marcus Allen, who publicly protested his use as just a third down receiver in the game now. Here's a throw and a diving catch on third down, but we'll see if it's enough for the first down. Well done by Ethan Horton, the tight end, making his 32nd catch of the season. And apparently where the mark is, it's going to be close enough to measure. There's Ethan Horton making a nice diving catch. It's tough to see there from that angle whether the ball bounced up off the ground back into his stomach, but they call it a completion, but I think he may be a little short. Markers come out. But it was really interesting talking was not think that as he put it, his team laid it on the line every week like the Raiders have been known to. Well, I think he's, you know, disappointed in, in the record and disappointed in the in the way they played and, and a little frustrated and exasperated that uh, some of the guys have uh, spoken out, particularly a guy like Marcus Allen, who, you know, had a lot to say there a few weeks ago and, uh, you know, picked Monday night football. Uh, uh, for the theater in which to say it, you know, and there's 44 other guys playing a team game, and you could tell from that little speech he gave, he had his own agenda that night. They do get the first down as the handoff goes to Nick Bell. He doesn't get much on a first down carry. Jason Buck was the man on the tackle, a former Outland Trophy winner from BYU. Jason Buck was a Cincinnati Bengal, an undersized defensive tackle with good speed was of course a Cincinnati Bengal. Well, I think that's one of the, the things that the Redskin coaches, and that's the end of the first quarter, but are a little worried about the undersize of their defensive line against a big, powerful offensive line. Picture the Buffalo Bills in position to win their way to home field advantage in the American Conference for a third straight year if they win at Houston. Second down throw, and Schrader guns it downfield beautifully. Right on the numbers, he makes a first down throw to Tim Brown. A.J. Johnson was covering on the play, but Brown turns him in and makes the catch. Well, Tim Brown, 
down the field. This is a traditional Raider pass working against number 47. A.J. Johnson down the field fifth, between 15 and 20 yards. And if the Raiders offensive line can protect like they did on that last play, they're going to be able to throw the ball pretty well this afternoon. Raider, for the most part, has had time. Big blockers have been digging in against the Redskin pass rush. Nick Bell. They're going after the football out of the Redskins. Bell with two arms on it. The free safety, Brad Edwards, came up and made the first hit. Well, the Redskins' defense is a combination of undershifts and overshifts. And what I mean by that is they move the defensive lineman to either the weak side or the strong side. And when they move it to the weak side, it's commonly referred to as an undershift defense to the strong side and overshift. So that's what you can kind of look for, them moving their linemen back and forth, and then the Raiders trying to attack the soft spot or what we call bubbles in those defensive alignments. Trader on second down and seven. Fires downfield. He comes in high at Ethan Horton, who was running an open pattern. Trader with an overthrow. He stretched out his tight end. That can put him on the sidelines. Well, Archell said that, you know, they, they've kind of ignored the tight end through the course of the year and, and uh, that they wanted to get back to trying to get the ball to the tight end. And, you know, if you look at the Raider history, and uh, with Raymond Chester and Dave Casper and uh, Todd Christensen, the great re receiver tight ends they've had, it's always been a very integral part of the Raider offense. Third down, and the Raiders need seven from midfield. Well, this guy's got a gun, doesn't he? Another tight spiral. This time he's right on the numbers as Tim Brown is giving big problems to the Redskin defensive backs. Well, the thing, though, that's making these plays go is the Redskin defensive line is just unable to get anywhere near Jay Schrader, the, the big pocket there, plenty of time. And, and, you know, if you let Jay Schrader do this and Tim Brown just run one-on-one, -on -one, I promise you it's going to be a clinic. Raiders confidence obviously building his sore shoulder in good shape so is his pass blocking makes the pitch to Bell takes a look deep now swings it out oh man almost a pick by Andre Collins the outside linebacker Andre had a clear track to the end zone well it's another one of those plays though like a one-time play that the Raiders tried uh, on the throwback and Whenever you have a mindset in your quarterback, hey, this is a play we're going to try, like they tried that throwback, he threw the first interception, this is another one of those style of plays. He has his mind made up, and a lot of times you get an errant throw when you have your mind made up. I think he's better just going back and reading and throwing what seems to be there. Let's see what he does on second down and 10. Going back and reading what seems to be there. It's again Ethan Horton, but he's wide of the mark. And so Schrader is faced with another third down and 10 throw. And Jay's a little upset with that throw because uh, not that it would have been a first down, but he had Horton open and he threw it a little uh, outside that time. And uh, Wilbur Marshall there, number 58, is on the coverage, but it's just a throw behind Horton. He can't get both hands on it. Schrader did not have a happy parting here in Washington. He was traded in the summer of 88 to the Raiders for tackle Jim Lachey, but he had quarterback 10 games the previous season, started 10. Late in the season, Joe Gibbs went with Doug Williams, who subsequently led the Raiders to, uh, to the Redskins to a Super Bowl championship. Third down throw, and Tim Brown coming back at the ball may have had a tip. Al Boyd Mays made a play on it, number 20. So the Raiders stall on third down. You can see, though, that the Redskin defensive coaches, Richie Pettibone and Larry Pecatello, went for the blitz there to try to put more pressure on, and the coverage is a little tighter, and, and uh, Alvoid Mays gets in there on Tim Brown this time and breaks it up. But the Redskins knew that they couldn't, you know, make the plays with the four-man rush, so they went to the blitz. Richie, Richie Pettibone there. Yeah. One of the acknowledged best is a defensive coach. Hunter now in for Los Angeles. This is Jeff Gossett 
Angling for the near sideline, he hits a knuckleball. And they'll spot it out of bounds at about the 22. This may be his shortest of the season. A 14-yard punt. And the Redskins take over. Bob Golick. Maybe his final timeout, Bill. And you had him in the beginning at New England when he came out of Notre Dame as an All-American. No, that's right. His second year. And Bob was playing linebacker for the Patriots uh, at that time. And I was coaching the linebackers up there. And, and then, he, of course, made the transition to nose tackle and has had, you know, an outstanding career uh, for both the Browns and uh, the Raiders. He absolutely loves this game and is really, in a sense, broken heart of this. Maybe his last National Football League game. Gary Clark comes off the flank. A bit of an underthrow, but Clark back. That comes back to take in the ball. First down Redskins. 18-yard gain on the play. Getting back to Bob Golick, though, last Sunday night after they were beaten. We'll let you do the replay first here, Bill. Well, you know, with Ricky Sanders out, the play-action pass, the, the guy that can get down the field the best for the Redskins and, and the more elusive receiver is, is Gary Clark. Art Monk's the guy that like to put in motion and run those little read patterns, but Clark is the guy that like to strike down in the 15 to 20 yard area and the deep area with. That was an 18 yarder in the first down. Sprint rollout downfield. Throw! It's a pickoff by Terry McDaniel, but a penalty marker comes in. There's going to be an interference call, perhaps against the Raiders. McDaniel might have pushed off on Art Monk. I think what they're going to call him for is holding. I think as Monk went back to go against the grain there, that McDaniel grabbed his jersey. Good call. That's the call. Not as big a markoff, but it is a first down for the Redskins. Talking about Bob Golick, though, he was actually brokenhearted last Sunday night. He wasn't active for the San Diego game. He was on the L.A. Coliseum playing field. Weeping really uncontrollably, he had to be consoled by his teammates, and Al Davis went out and saw him and said, whatever we do, we're going to try to find a way to act this, take this guy and get him in there one more time. Well, I think when you realize that it's over and, uh, you know, you want to play and it's it's been part of your life like it has a Golix for so long, you know, there is some emotion involved. Terrific guy out of Cleveland, Ohio. Digging in the trenches. First down, Redskins. They go to the power run. Now the Raider defense, Bill, seems to be reading Ernest Biner more and more. They're starting to shut him down. Winston Moss came up to make the stop. Now the Raider front line of their defense, as I said early in the game, uh, even without Scott Davis, who hasn't played at all this year, uh, was another big defensive lineman. I think if you, if you look at the Raiders team and and you look at their defensive line, you would say, hey, this is this is the spot where they have pretty top quality people and, and uh, can build the defense from that defensive line. Big defensive line for the Raiders. Then comes after now the quarterback and Rippin trying to play fake. Couldn't uh, get away from Chester McLaughlin. Chester's listed at 315. He might have been that. He might be a lot more now. And he's a very good prospect from Clemson, a rookie player. Well, McLaughlin is, is a guy that had his foot hurt early in the year when we had the Raiders and uh, didn't get too much work done in training camp or the early part of the season, but played pretty well lately. And, and, and I know from watching this guy in college, he was very, very difficult to block. And I think the Raiders, you know, think he will be another of these dominant defensive linemen that will fit with some of the others they have. He certainly dominated in that last pass rush, getting the sack, making it third down and 18. Rippin looking deep. Here comes the heat. He dumps it off to Ernest Biner on the run. He's ahead for a first down and out of bounds at the 40. Rippin under the rush. Dumps it off to his outlet man, and Ernest Biner does the rest. 19 yards and a first down. Well, this is a case of, of a linebacker who's supposed to be covering Biner Kind of just losing track of him, and I think it may be number 99, Winston Moss, who just lost track of him for one second, and Miner kind of snuck through the pile there, and with nobody open downfield, Rippin gave, gave it to him, and he got the big first down. 
Still a scoreless game in the second quarter. Biner with a halfback option. And Art Monk can't hold out of the 25. Biner got it there. Well, well, you can. Uh, Joe Gibbs is pulling out all stops. You know, he's the second play of the game is a reverse. Uh, you know, they're they're trying to, to to do anything they can to get a little momentum. Biner's thrown passes, uh, halfback passes for touchdowns before. And, and uh, but they're trying to do anything they can to get uh, the Raiders off balance, and get a little offensive momentum. He joined us late. The Redskins started with an 18 play drive after the opening kickoff. Then Low Miller missed a field goal. Still no score. Griffin, Cox reloads and dumps it off to his tight end, Ron Middleton. And on second down and 10, he crashes ahead down to the 32 yard line. Gain of eight. Well, Rippin pulled that ball down again. The Raiders' pass coverage is, is holding up pretty well. He's having to go to his outlet receivers. And, and the reason you see him pull, pull the ball down is the Raiders are basically a man-to-man -man defensive team. And when they've got their guy, you know, Rip, Rippin can't throw it to him, so he has to look for the outlets. And that's what's happened in the last two passes here. Now the Raiders go to a three-receiver stack set to the left. Rippin fires. Catch is made. Desmond Howard makes the play. Just his third catch as a Redskin, but it's good for a first down and keeps the drive going. Desmond Howard, the rookie, you know, highly touted number one draft choice, Heisman Trophy winner, but talking to Joe Gibbs yesterday, he said this guy missed a lot of training camp and, and they could just never catch him up uh, during the course of the season. Now he's forced in there. Uh, in the absence of Ricky Sanders, but they say he's still kind of going through training camp, and uh, he's had a hard time catching up. Missed training camp and a contract holdout. They love his attitude, though. Gibbs raved about him as a special teams player. Here's a handoff to Biner on a first down run. He's to the 24-yard line. Ronnie Lott comes up as the strong safety and makes the pop. They really were, he had extolled uh, Desmond Howard really as far as his character and the way he plays the game. He said, we haven't used him much from scrimmage, but on special teams, he's been one of our best guys. He'll play wherever we put him. Well, I think that's where he's, he's gained a little respect, too, from the veterans, you know. And every time you get a guy with this much publicity comes on a team, this guy is going to have to prove himself to the Redskins. And, and the way Desmond Howard went about doing it was playing well on special teams this year. No question, the posse is aging. There's the oldest member of the posse, Art Monk in motion. On second down and seven, Griffin fires it away. As again, the Raiders had the heat on him. Howie Long was coming hard. And Anthony Smith, who's the Raiders' sack leader with 13, was also in pursuit. Howie Long heads to New York tomorrow to join Bob Costas and company on NFL Live. Third down arises now for the Redskins. Ball positioned at the 22-yard line of the Raiders. Don Cricky with Bill Parcells, RFK Stadium in Washington. Final regular season game for both clubs. Redskins come in at nine and six, very much alive in the playoff chase for the final spot in the National Conference. Raiders playing for pride. They've shown a lot of it so far. Right now they show Jay Schrader, Bill, a defense he didn't like. He calls timeout. So with 7.14 to go in the first half and still no score, timeout on the field. Third down throw by Rippin as he stands in again. He dumps it off, but this time Middleton is down and he'll not make the first down yardage. As they get him, Anthony Smith falls on him, and so the field goal unit comes back out. Desmond Howard was shaken up a bit earlier. He's being escorted off, appeared to have a hand or arm injury. So the Redskins uh, lost Ricky Sanders last week with a sprained ankle against the Eagles. He didn't start today. In fact, is inactive. And now Desmond Harder, the rookie who's starting in his place, goes off. Now we're told it's a separated shoulder. He'll not be back today, Desmond Howard. Low Miller, though, is back in form as he spins a 39-yard field goal up and good for the Redskins. And Washington, with 6.34 to play in the half, finally goes on the scoreboard and leads 3-0. Field goal by Jim Lowmiller, who now kicks it off to the Raiders. Three nothing game, six and a half to play in the first half. Sam Grady, super fast, tries to turn it wide, but good special teams play. 
And the Redskins close him down as Schrader gets set to come back out. Nick Bell pays, and again, he pays the price as he is Kurt Govea, the middle linebacker, came up and popped him. 54. Well, Kurt Govea is a, a, a very instinctive, quick, you know, kind of the leader on the defense there. And uh, Larry Pecatello, the uh, defensive coordinator of the Redskins, yesterday said that last week, you know, Govea had missed a few tackles because he has a shoulder that's bothering him. He didn't practice at all this week, but you can see it's game day, and like a lot of the Redskins, he's out there. Yeah, he said he wanted to see and watch him to see if he could use the arm, and now fighting hard again is Nick Bell. That was on a second down and seven carry. He'll be uh, about two yards short of the first down as he takes it out to the 30 and is hit by Danny Copeland, the strong safety. Well, Nick Bell looks like he's starting to get his... Uh, a feel for this game. He, he run those last two plays better than he did the uh, first couple when he started the game. And sometimes when a guy hasn't played too much, like Bell has it, and you get in there and you know you're going to carry the ball 15 or 20 times in the game, it takes you just a little while before you get the feel of, of making the right cuts. And it looks like he's kind of starting to get the feel of that right now. Yes, it does. He is now the deep back behind the blocking back, Steve Smith. Play fake. Schrader airs it out. On the fly is Sam Grady. No flag. Grady was looking for him. Daryl Green on the fly right with Sam Grady. There's two of the fastest people in pro football running step for step. Very nearly a 50-yard hit, though, for the Raiders. Well, Grady has great speed, and of course, so does Daryl Green, and they're running stride for stride, and the Raiders, of course, won a little pass interference, and, you know, Grady just dropped that ball. It's good coverage by Green, but the ball was there. He had the opportunity to catch it. He just didn't catch it. So Schrader tries to hit big on first down. Now he faces second and ten. with third and long, long yardage with 4.45 to play in the half. And Wilbur Marshall is one of the guys on this Redskin defense that has the ability to make big plays. And, you know, every defense isn't, doesn't have 11 guys that can make big plays. And the Redskins have a few on their defense, Green and Mann. And, but I think the big playmaker, if you count pass defense and run defense, and, Rushing the quarterback, this is the number one guy the Redskins have, Wilbur Marshall. As he told us yesterday, Billy, this is his best season. He's sure of that. He's going back to the Pro Bowl. Here's a blitz, and Schrader is swept under. Danny Cope with a strong safety, lined up wide, and took off like a track athlete, nailing Schrader. But you see what's happened here. In the early part of the game, the Redskins were approaching it defensively with the four-man rush and the little conservative approach. And now they've changed up. You see him on the top of the screen. Marcus Allen tries to come over and pick him up late, but the Redskins have now found out they're going to have to blitz to get to Jay Schrader, and they've done it successfully a few times here in the last two possessions. Jeff Gossett now in the end zone for Los Angeles. Ryan Mitchell back for the Redskins. Well hit by Gossett. Here's Mitchell. They set up a return right. He's losing yards the way he's heading, and they're going to get him back at the 43-yard line. Mitchell will not fair catch, or very rarely. Eaton Horton ran him down there. 319 to play now in the first half. Still 3-0 Redskins. Joe Gibbs, a longtime adversary on the field of Bill Parcells, but he gave you a well, welcome yesterday at the training center, Bill, like you were one of his former players. Well, yeah, he gave me a big hug. And, of course, we've been in competition uh, for a long time, and he's a guy that I just have great respect for. And, you know, being in the same division and fighting it out, there's some great battles. And, you know, I remember him, and he remembers him. And uh, he, he's just, a, you know, a great guy and a, and a great reflection on the National Football League. It's been said about it, when things are worst, he coaches best. 
he almost enjoys what his team has been up against this year, having to rally back. Here's Rippin on first down. Gary Clark. Lots of Raiders collar him and knock him down to the 48. Well, Joe Gibbs' problem right now is the absence of skill people uh, with Ricky Sanders out at the wide receiver, and now Desmond Howard out. He just has Monk and Clark as his two veteran receivers, and then number 24, Carl, uh, Carl Harry, off the practice squad as his third guy. Yeah, they were looking to play Carl from scrimmage. They just activated him. Redskins running low on wideouts. As now they have second down and four. To the run, Miner fighting ahead, and he's across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. He'll be close to a first down. Brief skirmish. Well, one of the things the Redskins like to do, they spread you out, spread you out all over the place, and then run those draws to Biner right up the middle. And, uh, you know, that's been their theory for a long time. Spread out and run the draw. Try to get you in uneven spacing. Rippin airs it out to Art Monk. And the super hitter, Ronnie Lott, comes up and fires right at the opportune moment, knocks the ball free. Here's a guy I know you have great admiration for, Bill Parcells, and at our meeting with him last night when the Raiders came in, it was really inspirational what this guy had to say. Well, I'll tell you, he, this has to be my, the fa my favorite player that I never got to coach. Now we go on second down and 10, and the Redskins are shut down. That was Ricky Urban's coming out. Lot said, you've got to find a way to get yourself up to play. You've got to make it fun. You've got to leave, lay it on the line every game. Leave some of yourself on the field. And our guys haven't been doing that. Ronnie Lott certainly has every game. Three to nothing with less than two minutes to play in the first half. Don Cricky with Bill Parcells. Bill's a surprise to all the Raiders are playing like they are. Well, the Raiders got to be happy with the way this game is going. Their defense is playing well. They're putting a little pressure on the quarterback in a three-point uh, game. You know, they got to be happy with the way it's going right now. Raiders had a lot of open receivers running in the Redskins secondary. Sometimes he's hit him, sometimes he's had overshoots, but... You have to think that he's going to go back and hit some big plays against the Washington pass defense if his pass blocking holds up. The last time he had the ball, though, you remember, the Skins got a rush, go with blitzes from a safety from linebackers, got an overmatch against the blocking wall, and got to Schrader twice. Now it's Rippin ready to throw for the Redskins. Outlet man is Irvins. On third down and 14, Ricky Irvins, a quick little back is down to the 45-yard line. Well, the Raiders' defense has held up well, and, uh, you know, they've got to be very pleased with a minute 42 to go against the Redskins, and I think that the uh, Raiders, if they can just get some offense, of go offense going here, we'll have a game. Well, the Redskins seem to have found the defensive strategy, though, the, the blitz pressure on the Raiders, and unless the Raiders solve that, then, then the, the role is reversed because the Raiders had good success against the four-man rush, but no success against the blitz. Tim Brown, Bear catches the punt, and it'll be first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Ricky Sanders to the left, injured wide receiver. Ernest Biner, two yards th short of 1,000 yards for the season rushing. He was dinged in his last carry, but it looks like he'll be back. Well, they can't afford to lose him because... He's the guy that, uh, as you said early, and Joe Gibbs made reference to yesterday, he's, he's, he's one of the best practice players they got. He can run, he can block, and he can catch. He can do it all, and of course, he has the numbers to, to back it up. And as we saw earlier, Billy can throw through the pass. Our Monk wouldn't hold on to it. Vince Evans now comes in to run the Raiders offense. 37 years old. Marcus Allen. Looking like the Marcus Allen of the Super Bowl year when he rushed for an NFL Super Bowl record of 191 yards against the Redskins down in Tampa. Broke one 74-yarder for a touchdown. 
Vince Evans is trying to get the Raiders back in the formation. They're a little slow to get back to the line. Allen on a delay draw. Weaves ahead, doesn't get much. Gets to the 27-yard line. There's Jay Schrader, who has been pulled. I don't know if his shoulder's bothering him anymore. He did have that shoulder problem. Was a doubtful starter until pregame warm-ups. Well, he got, he got pr hit pretty hard there on that last blitz, but talking to him last night, you know, he, he wanted to play in this game because having been with the Redskins, it's it kind of a personal thing when you get a chance to go back, and, you know, I'm sure he would like to, to, to be a factor in, in, in maybe keeping the Redskins out of the playoffs, so, although I know he has friends on the team and everything, uh, still, competition's competition. He'd like nothing better than to come in here and Help the help the Raiders win. Bill, yeah, you remember what you called his coming out party here in a Monday night game. Well, it was an unfortunate night for Joe Theismann. That was the night that that uh, I think most of uh, football America remembers Joe having that broken leg and some of the vivid shots that were taken of that. But this guy came off the bench and kind of lit up the scoreboard on us that night. That was really the beginning of Jay Schrader's. Uh, football career. Report on Ernest Binary as a bruised back. They'll check it more at halftime and determine whether or not he'll come back to play in the second half. Off his back foot, Vince Evans makes the throw. Marcus Allen on second down at eight lunges ahead. That's a gain of six yards on the play. Marcus wanted more playing time. He's getting it here. Well, in the two-minute offense, Marcus is the, has been their third down back all the time, so On a dive, Raiders get the first down and call a timeout with 33 seconds left to play. Right now, the Raiders looking to try to hit something with 33 seconds to play in the first half. They trail three to nothing. Vince Evans called in to step in for Jay Schrader. Makes the drop. Here comes Wilbur Marshall. Evans, a good runner. And the skins way back in pass coverage. Give up about 10 yards. Here's a penalty marker coming in after the play. Could be some tack down on a late hit. At the end of the play, personal foul, late hit, number 55 in the defense. 15 yards, first down. Andre Collins. All of a sudden, the Raiders are in long field goal range. Well, Evans down, and of course, Collins is late. And, you know, they're trying to protect the quarterback. You know, another another uh, seven or eight yards, though, and the Redskins, I mean, the Raiders are in field goal position. We may have a tie game here at the half. And Evans gets time, swings it off, but he misses Marcus Allen. 19 seconds to go in the half. Second down comes up from the 36-yard line of Washington. Well, all Evans has to do is get one completion He'll have time to get up to the line of scrimmage and uh, stop the, the clock with by spiking the ball, and they'll be in field goal range. What he doesn't want to do is, is take too long on some type of running play or a pass that the receiver can't get out of bounds and have the clock run down where it's impossible to stop him. Three-man rush by Washington. Nice defensive breakout. Tim Brown standing there waiting for the ball to come in, and Brad Edwards, number 27, the free safety, came up and knocked it free. That was an excellent defensive play by Brad Edwards. Vince Evans was kind of staring the receiver down and it allowed Edwards to get a good break on it. You see Evans kind of stares at the guy for a while, and Edwards is watching Evans, and Evans is staring at Brown, and he kind of figures that that's where the ball's going. on a defensive penalty. The offensive team was not set. It happened in the last 10 seconds. The half is over. 
Foul against the offensive team, so the Raiders, out of timeouts, are unable to set up for the field goal drive. They get down close, and they go to the locker room, trailing just three to nothing. crowned fastest man but not enough speed to beat the pursuit of the Redskins as he's down at the 21 yard line as we look at the Coors cutter halftime stats I don't know Bill whether offenses weren't playing good or the defenses were especially good I think it was the defenses and you know the Redskins had the ball the way they like to have it but they don't have all that much to show for it and you know the Raiders just weren't able to do anything they just kind of mismanaged that time right there at the end of the half or it might be a 3-3 game but both offenses have been kind of struggling here both defenses playing pretty well Vince Evans who went in for Jay Schrader in the second quarter opens the third as quarterback for the Raiders Nick Bell turns it up turns it ahead Hannah Storm I just talked to Jay Schrader, who was pulled in the second quarter. And in Hannah's opinion, Jay was very upset about being pulled and not seem to be over an injury bill. Well, you know, he wanted to come in here and play well, but, you know, there's been an unsettled quarterback situation at the Raiders all year long, and I don't see why there's any reason to think it's going to be settled here in the last game of the season. Nick Bell breaks it again. A second carry, a second first down run. First 12 yards, then 11. And the Raiders had the ball out to their 46-yard line. High above RFK, Al Davis. Watches a team that he's not at all happy with this season. Jay Schrader, you have to wonder if he'll be back with the Redskins or with the uh, Raiders next season. His contract is up. And the numbers aren't there. move again for another first down. It looked like the running back fell, Bill. Well, it just goes to show you that you get a couple of inside running plays going like the Raiders did, and then all of a sudden you come with a bootleg or or a miss, anything that kind of looks like a running play, and there was a little slip there on the part of Bell, and Evans just kept the ball, and there was no pursuit by the Redskins. Now the Raiders got the best drive of the, of the game going for themselves. Pitch back. Bell. Penalty markers are down, and so is Bell on a first down run to the Redskins 41-yard line. Raiders heading back. Looks like it might be against him. Holding number 77 of the offense. 10 yards. It's still first down. Reggie McElroy called for holding. So the Raiders looking their very best on offense that they have in this game to open the third quarter now are set back on the holding call to their 47 yard line. Well, I'm sure what Archell talked to his team about it to have was, hey look, you know, let's get out there and let's try to run right at these guys to start the second half and do something about the physical aspect of the game and the first two or three plays seem to indicate that that's what they intended to do but this penalty set them back a little bit. Field throw. Tim Brown on the run. Loses one defender. Brad Edwards, the free safety, can't get him. And Tim Brown lunges down to the 25-yard line on the play of the game. As the former Heisman Trophy winner, who underwent knee surgery and really got back up to full speed this season, turns in a big play. Well, Tim Brown running all the way across. It's just a foot race with A.J. Johnson, and he wins it and then slips the tackle from two guys, Johnson and Edwards. And you know the Raiders are in definite field goal range now and you see them coming out of the huddle a little more sharply and it, it just kind of looks like this is the most momentum they've had all, all game long. No question. Momentum's with them now and first down and ten. Play fake. Evans sprinting out. Undershoots his tight end. Ethan Horton. Evans very much under pressure. He's a very, very popular member of the Raiders, as you know, Bill. They really like just having him on the team at age 37 because of what he does for younger players. 
Well, sometimes when you've been around and you've seen it all like he has, and, you know, nothing surprises you and you can kind of put everything in perspective, but he was a little upset with himself there because he had his tight end open and he wasn't able to get the ball to him with just a bad throw. Interception of this season by Daryl Green ends the Raider threat. The Raiders had their best drive come up short. Let's watch that interception a moment ago. Well, Willie Gall here at the bottom of the screen working against Daryl Green, and he really has Green beat for an instant. And if Evans would have just laid the ball over Green's head as he attempts to come underneath. It would have been a touchdown, but he threw it a little flat, and Green was able to recover and come across and kind of bisect the ball and come up with the interception. Mark Griffin on second down goes to the run again, and Irvin breaks through. Second and five, Ricky Irvin weaves his way for a Redskin first down. Well, with Ernest Biner on the bench, this, this guy, Ricky Irvin, who's kind of emerged as the second runner and all-purpose guy for the Redskins, now is going to have to carry a lot of the load here the second half. And he's not quite as versatile as Biner, but just running the football, he's, he's very good and can fill in for Biner well in, in that aspect of the game. He got 14 on that run. Back to Irvin, not tall, 5'8", but he's powerful, 200 pounds, very elusive. Townsend makes the stop. He's another one of those backs that, that seem to be kind of emerging in the National Football League. Emmett Smith, Barry Sanders, Thurman Thomas, and now Ricky Irvin's here. The low center of gravity, Barry Foster's another one. The low center of gravity backs that hard to tackle, hard to get a good shot at, and pretty durable. swings out. Rippin throws over the middle and makes the connection to Gary Clark. So the Redskins come right back. Ronnie Lott makes the tackle, but he does it 15 yards downfield. Well, you know, I always felt like in playing the Redskins and, of course, having played against him 16 times, that, that this was the guy right here you had to make sure that, or try to make sure that, that he didn't get going because this guy is capable of making big play after big play, and he certainly made his share against us. And this is a guy you have to do an awful lot to try to take out of the game if you're going to stop the Redskins. But it should be duly noted, Bill, also your Giant teams won their last three games at RFK Stadium. This is a very difficult uh, stadium to win in for anybody. Uh, did you find them particularly difficult to prepare for, the Redskins? Well, the best thing about coming down here to play and with the great fans they have here in Washington and the, and the teams that they've had here is when you come in here with the team, they know it's everybody against the 47 that you have. And so sometimes you can kind of, you know, you're forced to, to pull together in a place like this or you have no chance to win at all. And so the team kind of concept becomes more important in a place like this. You've had a lot of chess matches across the field with Joe Gibbs over the years. They really don't change that much, though, do they, in offense and defense? They pretty much run the same systems and very well. Well, they have a philosophy. They believe in it. It's been successful. I don't see why you would want to change it. But after you play against the guy so much or he plays against you, it's, it's you get into that situation where, you know, you know that he knows and he knows <laughs> that you know that he knows. And, 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 and you get into that kind of thing, and sometimes you kind of paralyze yourself with a little overthinking, and I think that happened a couple of times to me uh, against the Redskins from my own personal standpoint, thinking too much and not enough 
play it. Third and ten. Here's the throw, and Irvin doesn't catch it, and he pays the price anyway. And a penalty marker's down at the line of scrimmage. That staff the clock with 7.57 to go. Third quarter. Illegal motion signal Illegal against Washington. Motion, number 81. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Art Monk must have turned up field early before the snap. He was in motion. So the Raiders will get it back. We'll see if they have their emotion with them after that long drive that came up with an interception, ended with an interception. Well, this is starting to shape up like one of those games where one key crucial mistake is going to wind up determining the winner. And the Raiders made one big one just a minute ago, but there's still enough time left where you can't count that as the game decider. So I think you're looking for a big mistake to turn the game. A warrior and one of the best Plan B signings since that went into effect. He was a longtime Cincinnati Bengal. Raiders signed him. He had started UCLA. Had some injury problems, but when he's in there, he's as good a guard as there is around. First and ten now for Vince Evans and the Raider offense down by three points. Big Nick Bell runs it. Not for very much. Gets a couple of yards. Here's how the Raiders form chart went on offense. That early interception, the deep throw by Schrader. Punt, punt. Couldn't get a field goal off, had no timeouts. We're down close just before halftime, but time ran out. And then the end zone interception of Vince Evans by Daryl Green stopped the opening drive of the third quarter. What would you do if you were Raiders coach right now, Bill? Well, I would try to do what they did in that last possession, run it a little bit, and then try to mix the pass in. This Bell is a big, strong guy, and it takes more than one Redskin to get him down. And keep the third down conversions down pretty low if you run him on first and second and of course you can't do that every possession but uh, he's a guy that can keep the third downs down like they have right now about a third and three and you've got a good chance to convert if you can make it third and two or three have to like his numbers averaging five yards a rush he's been doing that all season long in a limited number of carries uh, came in with just 60 carries but averaged 4.9 yards a run Wilbur Marshall is eyeing him on third down and three. Schrader waits on the sidelines. Yanked in the second quarter. Here comes the rush. Evans throws and a little bit too much lead on it for tight end Ethan Horton. And a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. will be against the Raiders. Holding number 65 of the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. We just talked about Max Montoya. We got Max grabbing. On the right side of the screen, you see number 65, and he just has a headlock uh, around Tim Johnson. And... Uh, of course, that was obviously a good call by the umpire. Now the Raiders are going to have to punt. There is their punter, Jeff Gossett. Brian Mitchell, return man for the Redskins, back at his 32-yard line. Not too deep. Mitchell waves off. Tells his teammates stay away as they let it carry him out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So with 6.15 to play in the third quarter, the Redskins continue to hold to just a field goal lead. From their 38-yard line. Rippin to Clark, who has that great knack for getting down on his knees and catching it just off the turf as he makes a first down reception, good for a gain of 18. Well, all of the Redskins play action passes like the one you see here are down the field over 20 yards. The Redskins do not have very many play action passes. And when they throw one, you can be sure that the ball's going down the field quite a ways. And that was a good example of it right there. Rippin froze him with the play fake. He faked that end around the month that they run earlier in the first quarter. Ricky Irvins. This guy's a 
took got a fine, let alone tackle. Hides behind his blockers and breaks it for a 12-yard gain. First down, Washington. Winston Moss was the tackler. Now the Raiders' defense, which has played very well all day long, now is facing probably the toughest time they've had to face during the game because the Redskins have the lead. They're already in pretty close to Low Miller's field goal range. And they've got real pressure on the Raiders' defense right now. Just as you said that, Low Miller started swinging his leg on the sidelines. He's getting ready. Irvins again is caught, gets away, and is knocked down. There's no gain. They almost had him for a five-yard loss. But one of the things you don't want to do when you're in field goal range is run backwards. <laughs> and Irvins tried to, to uh, adjust his path there. The Raiders missed him in the backfield. And, you know, he almost knocked them out of field goal range. They're right on the limit right now. So I'm sure Joe Gibbs would before they made the attempt, would like to move it in a lot closer. Ernest Biner just two yards short of a thousand, out with a bruise back. Rippin looks deep. Our pump goes for the ball. It is ruled he was out of bounds when he brought it in. Incomplete pass. Lionel Washington covering on the play. Well, the Raiders have good cornerbacks, and Terry McDaniel and Lionel Washington, and both of those guys are capable of playing man-to-man -man defense against the type of receivers that the Redskins have, and that's one of the reasons why Rippins had to go to his outlet, the Biner in the first half, and Middleton a couple of times, because the coverage by these Raider cornerbacks is, is too tight on their wide receivers. Last season, the Redskins were the fourth highest scoring team in NFL history. Scored 486 points and 51 touchdowns on offense. They have less than half that many touchdowns this year, just 23 on offense. Rippin hears a chorus of boos as he misses a third down throw and Low Miller comes out. Now the Raider defense rose up there and, and now Low Miller is certainly capable of this field goal, but I can tell you this is no cinch from this distance with this wind blowing a little bit down here. This is a tough field goal try. 48 yarder, he's two for two, 50 plus this year. 11 of 13, 40 yards plus. Not close, he's way wide right and short. So the Raiders stay in the game. 3.54 to play in the third quarter and they still trail the Redskins by a three to nothing count. A moment ago, Low Miller tried a 48-yard field goal that never came close. It was way wide right and even short. Vince Evans eyes time with the fake. Throws to Ethan Horton. And he piles ahead. Moves that pile ahead and he gets a gain of about nine yards to the 40-yard line. Andre Collins on the tackle. Raiders playing relatively well in tough conditions for them. It was almost 80 when they left Los Angeles yesterday. Chill factor is now down close to zero here in Washington. Yeah, but I don't think it's cold enough where it really makes a difference today. The wind isn't that bad and the temperature isn't that low. And I think, you know, once you get running around out there, you can warm up pretty good. Nick Bell at the pitch and a first down carry as he gets ahead for three yards and a first down out to the 42 yard line. Nick Bell starting to run with a lot more confidence than he had early in the game. You can see him nodding to his offensive linemen and you know if the Raiders are going to do anything it's going to be just with the mixture of Nick Bell exclusively on the running game. I don't think anyone else other than Evans has a carry and then uh, you know maybe a downfield pass to to Brown or Gault, but uh, that seems to be all the weapons available to the uh, to the Raiders today. On first down, Bell has a blocking back and Steve Smith in the backfield with him. Play fake to Bell. And Evans takes a look. Here he goes. He dives across midfield on a first down carry, a scramble by Evans at age 37. He's ahead for eight. That's another element now that the Redskins 
were not really going into the game expecting Schrader. You know, they're not all that geared to to uh, to play against a scrambling type guy. And of course, they've had their share of scramblers against them with Randall Cunningham being in the division. But Evans is, is this scrambling is a little unexpected from him. He's got 34 yards already on just four scrambles. Hasn't lost that foot speed even at age 37. Now second down to two. Govey on a blitz. He eludes him. Makes the connection to Andrew Glover. A second and two. They only got about a yard and a half, so it'll be third and a yard or less. Now the Redskins were able on that play with the blitz again. They broke their middle linebacker, Kurt Govey, just completely clean, but with Evans' athletic ability, he was able to elude the blitz. He saw it coming quickly and get the ball back up the field to where they have a third and one now. And I'd be looking for Nick Bell if I were the Redskins. Unfortunately, he's not in the game. Yeah, Marcus Allen just came in for Nick Bell. Split backfield on third and one. And they're going to throw. Marcus makes the play. He's down to the 41-yard line. So the Raiders throw on third and one, and they hit a nine-yard gain. Well, that's a little bit of gimmickry by Art Shell and the Raiders. You know, send what looks like your short yard short yardage offense into the game, and then shift and spread out and throw a quick out, hoping you catch the Redskins in a zone defense, which is exactly what happened. Redskins not at all out of the woods in this game. A prohibitive favor. Local papers had him favored by 14 points. They're up by three. Evans lets a long one go on the fly and taking it down. Touchdown Raiders, Alexander Wright. 41-yard scoring play. So the Raiders hit the big play and take the lead. Well, Alexander Wright, uh, the speedster that was drafted in the second round by Dallas, just working against A.J. Johnson here. And John, you can't cover any better than that. No. It's a jump ball. The ball's there. Now, the Raiders had a lot better chance on the ball that was intercepted by Darryl Green to score than that one. And you never know. Sometimes it's just... The luck of the draw, and that's just what happened. Good coverage, the ball's there, it's a jump ball, and the Raiders come down with it. Just about right, a jump ball as the extra point is up and good. Alexander Wright was drafted by the Cowboys out of Auburn. They thought he dropped a lot of passes and traded him to the Raiders. Raiders love speed, and Alexander Wright was recently crowned the NFL's fastest man in that annual competition. And he comes down with the biggest catch of his career. Well, Alexander Wright off the good hard play fake. You know, Evans is just, he has his mind made up. He's just going to throw it deep to Wright no matter what the coverage is and what happens. He does it. Johnson's there. The ball's up. They both jump, and Wright comes down with it. Strangely enough, one of the reasons that Alexander Wright is not on the Dallas Cowboys anymore, and I know this for a fact because I talked to Jimmy Johnson about it, he didn't think Wright's hands were good enough. Of course, Evans is pretty happy about that oh, man. turn of events. That's his third touchdown pass of the year. He's thrown three interceptions, one today, Vince Evans. And it was just the 11th catch of the season for Alexander Wright, his second touchdown catch. But the Raiders, who had struggled on offense, had an end zone interception stop one drive in the third quarter. He hanging in with their defense and finally hit a 41-yard touchdown pass play. Now Danny Copeland goes back along with Brian Mitchell to return the kickoff. Onside kick. The Raiders want to win this game, but that won't do it as it was picked up by the Redskins. So the Skins now start in good field bowl position, but you have to applaud the Raiders in a way. They're pulling out all stops. They need a win. Well, you know, <laughs> that sure surprised me. And with a 7-3 lead, I, I'm not certain that I would have done the same thing. But you're right. They're trying to get momentum. And 
they made an attempt there, special teams wise, to to, to get themselves some more after that touchdown. Hope hoping to catch the Redskins sleeping a little bit, but they didn't. And now the Redskins have the field position. Power set for the Redskins. Ricky Irvin, the lone running back. It goes to Mitchell. He's looking to throw. We're all going to the bag of tricks now. Look at this. A wild downfield pitch by Brian Mitchell. That's the second running back pass today. Well, this is turning into a street game here. We got, it really is. We got halfbacks throwing the ball, and we got reverses, and we got... This is our second halfback pass. We got jump balls for touchdowns, and then a lot of other things, but the Redskins and the Raiders are both opening up the whole bag of tricks today. Two seconds remaining in the third quarter. Seven to three, Raiders over the favorite Redskins. Here comes the rush. Rippon gets it away. Art Monk's an open field. And somehow finds the handle and takes it in for a touchdown. The pass was there, he juggled it, took it in, and quickly the Redskins come right back after they lost the lead and regain it. Washington 10, Los Angeles 7. We'll be back with the uh, Redskins kickoff in a moment. Owner Jack Kent Cook well pleased with a wild and spectacular play. Art Monk bobbling the ball, fielding it, and running it in. And the Redskins go ahead as we start the fourth quarter. Don Quickie with Bill Parcells at RFK Stadium. So that onside quick kick try by the Raiders after they took the lead really backfired. Here's the kickoff coming downfield. Alexander Wright, who caught the touchdown pass. Look at this man run like he shot out of a gun. Well, that last touchdown, you see Monk coming down from the top of the screen in motion. And I told you before, when the Redskins run a play-action pass, the ball is going to go down the field over 15 to 20 yards. And that's a good example of what I meant right there. And Monk is just able to find the handle at the last minute. But that was only a two-receiver pattern. And Rippon laid it out. And now the pressure's back on the Raiders. Tell the guys to look it into your hands. He did that. Nick Bell stopped by one of his own blockers out in front. And a sweep right ends up in about a four-yard loss. Wilbur Marshall led the charge from defense for, for the Washington Redskins. Wilbur Marshall working against Ethan Horton and then Steve Smith fights off both of those blocks, splits the, the double team there, and along with number 55, Andre Collins, they create a minus play, and now the Raiders are second and 14, and this has been when the Redskins have liked to blitz a little bit, so stay alert for that. Here they come. They're blitzing. They pick it up. Long ball downfield. Alexander Wright was fouled on the play. It'll be a first down for Los Angeles. Running on a fly downfield. Daryl Green running with him. And a penalty marker came in. Well, they're talking about whether the ball was catchable now or not, I'll bet. Could be legal contact. I don't think you can overthrow this guy. We're talking about speed here. Well, there's a lot of speed, but... When you blow by Daryl Green, that's humming. Now the question is, is that little contact, did that keep right... There's no foul on the play. I'd like to know how you put the flag back in your pocket without any explanation. They didn't say it wasn't catchable. I mean, you just... That wasn't a mistake. He threw the flag. What did he throw it for? Well, he sure threw it. He fired it right in. Then Seven's going to take a look at that again now. He's gone to Alexander Wright once for a touchdown from 41 yards out. I'm still trying to figure out why he threw the flag. 
Yeah, and there was no, was no I think what you said initially was that they probably decided it was an uncatchable ball. But they never said that. Third down, Redskins aligning the blitz. Come with a four-man rush. Here's a penalty marker coming in after the play. Tim Brown was hit. No penalty, ball incomplete. That one was fired in late. This is definitely against the Redskins in a first down. Defensive pass interference, number 20, first down. Well, they told us what that one was for. There's Evans back, and Mays is there a little too soon, and he bumps Brown, and Joe Gibbs a little upset. Now, he was happy about the last one and not too happy about this one. A lot of time to go. 13.57 to play in the game. Redskins have taken back the lead from the Raiders, 10-7. Evans stands in. He can go, heading for the 12th man, and he bails out with a gain of about four or five yards. Well, this is the one dimension here that, that is kind of keeping the Raiders in this game, and that's the ability of Vince Evans to make something out of a well-covered pass. And he's done it two or three times, and, you know, the Raiders really didn't threaten until the end of the first half with Jay Schrader in there, and they've been down the field twice already the second half and are headed down there again with Vince Evans. And a lot of it has to do with his ability to improvise. Okay, he's been doing that. Now he has a nice play call. Second down and a long three. And around. Tim Brown looking to lose Andre Collins. He does, but then Tim Brown loses the ball. Picked up. This is Andre Collins on the run. Heading towards the end zone. He's out of bounds at the five-yard line. Fred Stokes knocked the ball free. This is the biggest play of the game right here for both teams right now. Third down and goal from the five-yard line. Rippin fires over the middle. He put too much pop on the ball, and he again inaccurate over the middle trying to hit Gary Clark almost shades of a week ago at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia when he missed Clark late in the game Clark had his hands on it and lost it with 34 seconds to play well this is what exasperates you as a coach you have the right play called everyone on the team executes it correctly except the quarterback there's Clark wide open just not a good throw and you know you, you, you could thank Mark Rippon for the Redskins having to kick this field goal. I'm sure he knows it. And the normally outstanding chip, Low Miller's no sure thing today. He's missed two of three earlier ones. He does hit this one, but even after the big return that gave the Redskins a first and goal at the Raiders' five-yard line, they get only three points and lead by six. Well, this last, last third down on the goal line, I think, Looking at Rippon right here, you get a good look. Clark's wide open. The ball was not tipped. It just wasn't thrown well, and Clark just can't stretch out. You see him looking. He knows he should have. That should have been a touchdown, and of course, Rippon there, he knows it should have been a touchdown, and instead of having a 10-point lead now, they have a 6-point lead, and of course, the touchdown would put the Raiders back ahead. Raiders down by just six. Redskins miss a knockout punch with first and goal at the five. Now here is Alexander Wright fielding the ball. He gets there fast, does Alexander. He's out to the 32-yard line. RFK, they've been up and cheering from the outset as Nick Bell gets the pitch back. Raiders do a good job stringing it out. Andre Collins was the lead tackler. You try to hit that long one again here, Bill Parcells. No, I think I would run. I, if I'm Archell right now, I think the Redskins get the idea that 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 they're going to run Bell wide. I think I would, on first down, maybe send him up inside once or twice and then try to mix that play-action pass to, 
the Tim Brown in there. They've had that a couple of times today, and that looks like the best way to attack the Redskins today. There's Tim Brown. He's wide to the top of your screen. Vince Evans looking that way. Triggers the ball, and Tim Brown, sure-handed, comes down with it at the 44-yard line. As long as the protection for the Raiders holds, they can throw and catch the football, but where they've had some problems here today is when the Redskins anticipate the pass a little bit and go to the blitz. Now you see Brown working against Johnson there, just a little turn in. He has six, six receptions already for 80 yards, so if there's gonna be any double coverage anywhere on any of the Raiders, it looks like it ought to go on to number 81, Tim Brown. This is Brown, 81 coming in motion and taking the defender back the other way and they go right up the middle. Nick Bell working hard on first down for not very much. He's to the 47-yard line. Well, these last couple of runs, though, Bell, Bell's kind of running like 185-pound back instead of 258-pound back. You know, he's trying to pick and, and see everything perfect. And sometimes when you're that big, you know, you just got to try to make your own hole uh, if there's not one there and, and just push that pile a little bit for four or five yards rather than dancing in the hole and get stopped for one or two yards. The Raiders who were challenged coming into this game to play Raider football, and they've done that. Down by six with a lot of time left in the fourth quarter. Nick Bell goes wide, looks for a gap, moves it ahead. A second down and seven play, and he's ahead for a gain of about three or four yards. Taken down by the safety, Danny Copeland and Brad Edwards. He's been getting a lot of work today, big Nick Bell. He was a standout high school wrestler, a state champion in wrestling. He's from Las Vegas, Nevada. He was a Big Ten sprinter with the Iowa Hawkeyes as well as a first-team All-American. Comes out to get a breath, and Marcus Allen goes in. Raiders need a long two on third down. Look at Marcus shoot it up. Make it ahead inside to the 39-yard line. Well, you see the difference there between a guy that's just running and a guy that's picking and looking and picking his hole. There, Marcus just hit the hole and, and made one cut and accelerated up in there and picked up the first down. Here you see it from the pit. You know, he makes one cut, and, and, and he's going north and south, and, and Bell is kind of trying to see maybe just a little too much here the last couple of carries. We're down to eight and a half minutes to play in the game. Redskins 13, Raiders 7. Another straight ahead carry. Well, I think the, the Raiders have a lot better chance to move the football in the running game if they just line up and run straight at the Washington Redskins. I think when you try to run right against the Redskins, then Collins and the athletic people like Wilbur Marshall get into the pursuit lanes. If you don't knock them on the ground, they wind up creating minus play. Free ball. Bell lost it. Redskins have it. They're whistling the play down. Wilbur Marshall's heading for the end zone, but it'll be brought back. Now we got to see if it's a fumble or... Now the Raiders, looks like the Raiders are going to keep the ball. At least they're clapping like they are. Well, what the Redskins did there on second and short was they ran what we call in football a run, bl a run blitz. And Wilbur Marshall, of course, has no pass responsibility. And I just mentioned his ability to make a minus plays. And, and they used them in that blitzing mode that time. And, and now we've got a third and ten car, eight for the Raiders. And this is where they've got to control Evans scrambling. Third and eight. Evans takes the drop, makes the throw. Marcus Allen weaves ahead. He has a first down. Lost the ball, but they rule he's down. And the Raiders are down to the Redskins' 26-yard line with seven minutes to play. Well, that was a nice job by Evans. And, and, of course, Marcus Allen's working against the zone defense that time. And... He just comes out of the backfield. He knows it's a zone, comes right underneath quickly and has the ball early and 
his vision's up the field and he's able to to get past the first down marker now the now the Raiders will probably be back to running it straight ahead again Bell is the deep back play fake to Nick Bell Evans throwing he makes a pitch to Napoleon McCallan who gets limited playing time from scrimmage and the man who led the nation in rushing at the nearby Naval Academy in Annapolis makes a play ahead to the 20-yard line. He's got a gain of about nine yards, about seven yards on the play. Well, you know, when you get a few of those inside runs going like the Raiders have, even though it just started in the last series, that opens up the play-action passing game and the bootleg off those runs, and that's what you saw there now. Now, the last time in this situation, the Redskins ran that run blitz with Wilbur Marshall, so we'll see if they do something similar again. Markers come in before the snap of the ball. Before the snap, ball start number 76. Five yards, it's still second down. It's interesting, Bill, that we have Eric Dickerson, who's been the Raiders' leading rusher this season with over 700 yards. He's not been on the field today, I don't think. Well, they're just looking at Nick Bell now, and they want to see what he can do. And, and uh, they've taken this game, and, and this is going to be Nick Bell's game. And when the season's over, they'll decide to do with what to do with the rest of their veteran back. Here's a blitz. Evans gets time. He makes the connection to Tim Brown. And there's a gain on the play of about six yards down to the 20-yard line. That brings up third down and four. Tackled by A.J. Johnson. Brown would have been gone if Johnson not taken him in. Well, I mentioned a minute ago that when the Redskins had the third and five on the goal line, it was the biggest play of the game. And the Redskins, I mean, the Raiders' defense made the play there. Now, this is the biggest play of the game for the Washington defense right here. This big play originates at the Skins' 20. Raiders need four on third down. Evans fires. The ball is caught at the six-yard line by Alexander Wright. Going to spot it down at the five now. So Alexander Wright, whose hands were questioned, looks like Raymond Berry out there. Well, <laughs> I don't. I don't know whether you put him in Raymond Berry's category. At yet, least for Doug, the moment. But. He does slip down there as the ball's coming and does cradle it in and it kind of, gee, A.J. Johnson kind of knocked it back right into his hands. It looked like it was rolling off his shoulder. Now the Raiders have a first and goal at the Redskin five-yard line. The Skins lead by six, 4.08 to play. Nick Bell turns it up, turns it in, and he's down close to the goal line. He's in. He broke the pylon. So the Raiders, playing like a team with a playoff spot on the line, come back and tie the game, an extra point away from taking the lead. Well, that was a great drive for the Raiders, and you know they mix the inside run, and here you see a play that's starting off tackle, and Bell doesn't see what he likes there, so he takes it to the corner and just runs through, runs through a couple of the Redskin defenders, and. At 2.58, he puts it across the goal line, and now the, Ra the Raiders have a chance to take the lead, put the pressure back on the Washington offense. Jager with the point after drive. He drives it through, and with 4.03 left to play in the game, the underdog Raiders have come back to take the lead again. They now lead the Redskins 14-13. A 12-play, 67-yard drive that used up over eight minutes Nick Bell on the payoff end. Coaches Shell and Gibbs, though, churning inside as Brian Mitchell runs back the kickoff for the Redskins, who now trail. He breaks it across the 30. Raiders try to strip the ball. They finally get Mitchell all the way out of the 45-yard line of Washington. 46-yard return. So the Redskins... Getting set for what might be a final drive to try to take back the lead. 
drive toward the playoff and the stage is now set with 350 left to play Washington trailing the Raiders 14 to 13 it was a good kick up though Bill well and Brian Mitchell the great Redskin return man who's been a big play guy on special teams now has him in what may wind up being the most important good field position of the year Jager kicked the kickoff two yards deep in the end zone but Mitchell ran it back 46 yards Field goal would put the Raiders ahead. They go to the run, and Irvins, there's been trouble for the Raider defense all game long, takes it across midfield on first down and ahead to the 49-yard line of Los Angeles. Bill, you've been in this position on the sidelines with the Redskins possessing the ball, looking to come from behind. Well, it almost seems like every time I was down here, it came down to one of these where your defense had to make a play to stop the winning drive, or their defense did, and every game was pretty much the same. The last possession who could ever do the most would wind up winning the ball game, and that's the way it is today here with the Raiders and the Redskins. And of course, the Redskins, I know Joe Gibbs, he will definitely be playing for the field goal right here uh, unless he gets the obvious chance for the quick touchdown. He's going to try and methodically drive it down in field goal range and take all the time off the clock and kick the winning field goal. Rippin looking deep. Let's it go. Art Monks. He's in. Now they're going to spot him at the goal line. But it's point blank range for the Redskins. Well, there was the chance for the quick strike, and he took it. And Clock's still running. It's it should be. That's inbounds. All right, it's not in. It's at the goal line. And it's the same guy that's made the two big plays for the Redskins today, Art Monk. And they're going to run it down apparently to the two minute warning. That was close to a touchdown. They call it at the goal line. Well, Art Monk just leaning in and giving a little jab. That's his third reception now for 97 yards. And yeah, he's down. So Art Monk, who was not happy about getting the ball much, and Joe Gibbs was also not happy. He wasn't getting the ball more. Makes another big play, first and goal. Monk on the reception, takes it down to the goal line, and there the Redskins trailing by one with two minutes to play, have it first and goal. Irvins, he's in. Redskins take the lead. the problem our Shells Raiders had in the first half. They were out of timeouts in that late drive and they were well within field goal range but couldn't align their kickoff their, their field goal team. Time ran out on them. Evans was 5 for 5 in that last scoring drive capped off by the Nick Bell run. 5 for 5 throwing the ball. And he'll come out pitching. There was a penalty against the Raiders on the extra point so Washington will kick off from midfield. There won't be a return unless somebody misses the ball here. Miller. He'll drive it out of the end zone. Sam Granny thought better of it. So in effect, it'll be first and 80 on the 20-yard line for the Raiders. They've got to go the whole way. As I said, though, with the three timeouts, you know, they still have time to, to move the ball methodically down the field. Now, in these two-minute drives, what you like to do is get the thing started and get the momentum going with a nice 15 or 20-yard play if you can. And as you pointed out, Bill, they have the three timeouts. Last week, Gibbs' lament was we turned the ball over too much. We played well, but turnover count was 3-1 to one in favor of the Eagles. Today, it's 3 to nothing in favor of the Redskins. They've not turned it over. Marcus Allen heads for the sideline, gets out of bounds after a gain of about six yards. Next year, the market will be closer to seven. Taken out by Daryl Green. Al Davis has seen all this before a thousand times over the years. Usually, when he was playing in his Hall of Fame career, Art Shell was flattening some pass rusher as an offensive tackle. Schrader, who had an unhappy ending here as a Redskin. 
traded to the Raiders. He had an unhappy day today. He was yanked in the second quarter. Evans finds a way free, and he makes the completion out to the 36-yard line. Penalty markers down in the Raiders' backfield, a holding call. So now L.A.'s really up against the bill. Well, that might be the play there that, that keeps the Raiders from winning because they had that 20, 15, 20-yard 20 gain. Hearing number 64 of the offense. 10 yards, 18 second down. Of course, the holding's on Todd Pete. That's, that's, that's the guy that's playing tackle here against Wilbur Marshall. He's normally a guard. Marshall takes the inside, and Pete just latches on to him. And, you know, Evans had the drive going the way you want it. But now they've got a second and about 4, 13 or 14. The noise is a factor. The pass rush is a factor. And they still have all their timeouts, but Evans is going to have to make a big play here. Is it second and 14? A four-man rush is after him. He swings it out to Marcus Allen. Makes people miss. Marcus Allen streaks out to the 28-yard line. Game clock winding down, though. 90 seconds to play. Now less. Marshall wants a timeout. And the Raiders finally signal for and get one with 1.24 to go. So there's not much time left and a long way to go for the Raiders when we come back. With Bill Parcells, this is Don Cricky back at RFK Stadium in Washington. And Los Angeles Raiders out of the playoffs, coming in at 6-9, and nine, playing for pride, and have displayed a lot of it. And they've battled back twice to take the lead and find themselves behind again now with 1.24 to play. Art Shell's Raiders with a third and two coming up. As the Redskins move closer toward a playoff spot, there are only two ways the Redskins can miss the playoffs. If they should lose today to the Raiders and the Packers win Sunday at Minneapolis against the Vikings, then the Raiders... Uh, the Redskins would be out and the Packers would be in. If the Redskins and the Packers both win this weekend and the Eagles lose to the Giants, that would give the Redskins, Eagles, and Packers 10 and 6 marks. The Redskins would be out on by virtue of the tiebreakers. So hope is alive, very much so, in Washington. And it won't be decided until after tomorrow's games. Bob Golick may be in his last game as a Los Angeles Raider. Now on the sidelines to do anything as the offense is out. Marcus Allen dives ahead. First down Raiders. 117 to play and the clock ticking down. Well now Evans is in the situation here where he needs that big chunky yardage again to get the ball across midfield. The time's starting to get short now and he needs to get that play to get this drive going. They've been fooling around here. Before the snap, encroachment, number 78 of the defense. Five yards, it's still first down. That's Tim Johnson who jumps off sides, but that holding penalty really cost the Raiders about 45 seconds. Now they need that play to get this drive going again. First and five, 64 ticks left. Evans lets it go long. Willie Gold is out there. sure they get up there and stop the clock or use the timeout they just use the timeout that's the play I was talking about that kind of play did more than get the drive started now Willie Gault is just on a post and Evans throws it as far as he can throw it and Gault's running as fast as he can and you know he's been quiet Man. today but he just outruns Daryl Green, and it's bombs away, and that's been the Raider trademark over the years. It's usually, if you don't stop the bomb, you don't stop the Raiders, and strangely enough, that was Willie Galt's first catch today. First of the season, or first of the day, and 27th of the season. While we have a moment, we'd like to tell you that the executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Coordinating producer of NBC Football, John Ferretzis. Today's game was produced by Bill Bunnell. Directed by John McDonough, Associate Director Dick Ellis, Production Associate Jim Bell. The Raiders, this building is actually shaking. Redskin fans jumping up and down. 51 seconds to play. 
The Raiders down by six. The ball is spotted at the eight-yard line. Nick Bell turns it in and down to the five-yard line. Well, the Raiders really don't have time to run the ball into the end zone. With only one timeout, they don't have time. Evans has got to get up there and call the play, and this one will be a pass, I'm pretty sure. This one has been only great. Nick Bell booming down to the three-yard line, and the Raiders stop the clock. Well, that shows you what I know, well, Don. I'm calling passes, and they're running the ball, but that's their last timeout now, and the ball's inside the five. If they risk running no, another one it. here, you know, they may never get that fourth down play off, and it's third and goal, so they can't make a first down, so it's two plays, three yards, and 21 seconds with no timeout. Gary Robisky, one of the offensive coaches, conferring with Vince Evans. Evans today coming into the second quarter to relieve Jay Schrader, who was pulled from the game. Evans has completed 14 of 20 throws for 210 yards and a touchdown. RFK is exploding with noise. Fourth and goal. With 17 seconds left to play. Now the Redskins were in an all-out blitz. That was one-on-one -on -one all the way across the board. They had Ethan Horton matched up there. The way they wanted it, but the Redskins made the play. And their season may well rest right here their ability to make that one more play defensively. Fourth and goal. Here comes another all-out blitz. Evans throws. Touchdown Raiders! Tim Brown! So Brown, who lost the handle earlier, was so dismounted, you'll remember him throwing his helmet after the fumble that was run back 41 yards by Andre Collins to set up a field goal for Washington. Now makes another big play for the Raiders as Tim Brown is having close to a career day. Well, that's just unbelievable poise by Vince Evans. Wasn't it? Second half coming in relief here and and just it's the taking eighth catch of the day. Excuse me, Bill, for Tim Brown. This will break the tie if it's good, and it is. Evans back. Pressure from the weak side. They hit him, but Brown's just loose inside of uh, number 20, Al Boyd Mays. And you see Evans is going to get hit just as he releases the ball. And Brown just works underneath. And of course, he vindicates himself for that fumble that that set up the, uh, the Redskins go-ahead touchdown. And it's it's ironic that he makes the big play, and of course, Joe Gibbs, he knows the chances of the playoffs aren't as good as they were just about three seconds ago. Archell on this long season, finally with something to cheer about, the eighth reception of the day by Tim Brown. He's caught balls for 88 yards and a touchdown. Even Al Davis, who's had a long season, moment of celebration. Well, you know, they say the, the, lo the winners tell jokes, the losers say deal, and the Raiders sideline, they're telling jokes right now. And the last deal of this game might be the kickoff. 13 seconds left. Big Joe Jacoby, who's been sidelined much of the year with injuries. 
one of the cornerstone hogs over the years. Bounce kick it downfield. Ryan Mitchell runs it back. And with nine seconds left, the Redskins offense comes out with time for one big play drive. Well, this was always the time when I was on the sideline on the kickoff. I always was wondering when that clock operator was going to start the clock. You know, and it always seemed like it started about two seconds too late. Redskin being attended to David Gullage, a backup defensive back and special teams player shaken up. With a 50-yard play to Willie Gall, set the touchdown up. Here it is. Well, Willie Gall on the bottom of the screen, just on a straight post pattern, and Darrell Green kind of trotting along, and then he realizes that it's going to be a foot race, and the safety, Copeland, cannot get over there to help Green on the post, and Evans just lays it up, and that's the play that, that set this whole thing up for the Raiders, and then, of course, Tim Brown makes that clutch reception on fourth down to give them the what looks like it's going to be a win here. But, you know, the Redskins, I hate to, to over-dramatize this thing, but with two timeouts, if they could hit one big play right here, they might still have a shot. Yeah, their guy can kick it a goal. long way. There's no question, Low Miller. Now we'll take a look at the Hager wrinkle-free cotton super play of the game. And here it is. Vince Evans on fourth down takes the snap from Mosbar. This is the Hager wrinkle-free cotton super play of the game. The pitch over the middle against a big rush is right on the numbers to Tim Brown who screens off the defender Elvoid Mays. That tied the game, the extra point gave the Raiders the lead, and now the Redskins, if they lose this, have put the Packers' fate in their own hands. Green Bay can win its way into the playoffs as the final wild card team in the National Conference if they win against the Vikings tomorrow. The big game here on NBC will be the Raiders, uh, the Broncos, and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, and the winner of that advances to the playoffs as an AFC wild card team and the loser will be out. Joe Gibbs was not expecting this. One of the scenarios was to win today and then have a couple of chances to, to lock it up tomorrow. Well you can bet those Packers are sitting up there in that hotel getting yeah. ready to play those Vikings and when Tim Brown caught that pass I'll, I'll bet you there was a few guys jumping up and down on the beds in that hotel up there in Minneapolis. Nine seconds to go. Raiders lead 21-20. Ripping with a deep drop. Three-man rush. All he's got behind the ball. It draws a crowd, and Ronnie Lott breaks it up. One more play. So we talked at the outset, Bill Parcells, the, the concern that Joe Gibbs had when we met with him yesterday about his team summoning great emotion again after those two division rivalries that they fought it out with. They beat the Cowboys in the closing moments here at RFK and then went to Philadelphia last week and lost in the closing seconds. They failed to come from behind when they had the chance against the Eagles. These are guys just laid it completely on the line two weeks in a row. I just hope emotionally they can be up again. Well, I think they were up enough, but I think no Ricky Sanders and no Biner the second half and no Desmond Howard and a season of disappointment. This is a great win for Art Shell and the Los Angeles Raiders as they come back from behind three different times and take the lead 21 to 20 and finally win it by that score.